talking about video nasties, the brutal, violent, and sadistic movies that become popular among some young teenage kids. Oh. So that's a classic wrong take, that horror is just blood and guts, uh, that horror is just... All the same, some stupid killer stalking some big-breasted girl who can't act, who's always running up the stairs when she should be going out the front door. That mistake's actually why I make these videos. Here I'm going to cover a film that was slandered as a video nasty, uh, but actually has a really good message and an intelligent and innovative way of delivering that message. Video nasty is not a slur. Let's have a look at the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Also, I know I don't usually speak to camera. Um, what I'm really into is taking film footage and hijacking the TVs in them. Um, but there weren't too many TVs in this film, so hey. Also, you get to see my mug. Anyway, what is it that makes the Texas Chainsaw Massacre great? Ich bin, <laughs> ich bin also im Urwald geboren. Ich habe Amerika besucht. Der Besuch war für mich nicht von Vorteil, aber die Schlussfolgerung liegt nahe, dass es für jemanden anderen von Vorteil war. Äh, als ich aus dem Urwald nach Amerika kam, wo ich da mit dem Schiff? Ja. Hier schah die Reise gegen meinen Willen. Ja. ja. Auf der Schiffsreise lag ich da in Ketten? Ja. Als ich in Amerika ankam, wurde ich da in Ketten zur Schau gestellt. Ja. Bin ich die Geschichte des Negers in Amerika? Nein. Also dann muss ich King Kong sein. Ah! Oh. 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 Bravo! Wirklich beeindruckend! Yeah. Now, a movie doesn't have to shove its message down your throat. In fact, I think it's a lot better if it doesn't. I don't feel that Inception would have been improved by Cobb looking to camera and saying, say, this whole process of Inception is a heck of a lot like movie making, don't you think? No, but in fact, handily enough, I think Inception is a really good way to deliver the message of the film, to, to be subtle about it, uh, so that someone looks back on a film later and realizes that maybe it had little more going behind the scenes. That's my main problem with the woke reboots, is that the message is always so rammed down your throat, it's just absolutely dominating the film. Uh, it's my big problem with the Jordan Peele movies, if I'm honest with you. It's that his message and politics are always so foregrounded that the story actually suffers and tends not to make all that much sense. The story always has to be strong on its own and stand on its own and has to be enhanced by th whatever themes and message you want to put in there. The themes, messages, allegories, they always have to be the seasoning and the aperitifs to the main meal of the story. So, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is made in 1974 by Toby Hooper and it is the classic horror recipe here. A low budget, a breakthrough director, a completely unknown cast, and it's not really a slasher, but it is close to that mold. In 1974, it's the same year as Black Christmas. We're talking early days for that genre. The basic plot has a group of teens investigating reported vandalism of their grandparents' grave and exploring the area, their family history. They are urbanites in rural America and they struggle with how basic and unsophisticated it is there. The short of it is they encounter a maniac, a massacre ensues, and we have a final girl scenario and one heck of a final girl scenario. The film is iconic for a reason. Now that's all done incredibly well, but let's skip to the meat of this video. The contention that Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a vegan horror film. So what's the evidence? Well, slaughterhouses are prominently mentioned and- Hey, that's your slaughterhouse. That's where grandpa used to sell his cattle. And the details of animal slaughter are a key source of horror in the film, and the protagonists are freaked out when they hear the grisly details of what goes on in the slaughterhouses. They bash him in the head with a big sledgehammer. Oh, oh that's awful. 
They usually wouldn't kill him on the first lick. I say grisly details, I thought that was incredibly apt as I thought grisly details came from gristle. Sort of um, sinewy offcuts in meat production that are sort of inextricable from the process. You know, it's a part of what they mean when they say you, you don't want to know how the sausage gets made. Uh, turns out I am wrong. Grisly details is not from gristle. It's from the German Gautzen, as in, you know, um, uh, to horrify, or grausam, horrifying, gruesome, um, or dieses Film graust mich. The more you know. So as well as sickening them and being a source of horror, this, these methods of animal slaughter are foreshadowing the fates of the protagonists. That is the main horror of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It is uh, humans being treated like animals and how horrific that would be. Um, and I don't just mean that they're eaten, you know, that is incredibly commonplace in horror. If that's the, the standard we have, then every vampire and zombie film is a vegan horror film. That analysis weak and pathetic. What I feel makes this reading valid is that in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it is incredibly specific about the methods of meat production. So, braining with a mallet, uh, suspending on meat hooks, uh, cutting the throat to bleed out, those sort of details. It's that specificity that makes the reading valid, I feel. And then of course there is Leatherface, the main icon of the film and the series. Weirdly enough, credited only as the cook in the credits. It's kind of like um, Pinhead being credited just as lead Cenobite in Hellraiser, weirdly enough. You might be thinking of him in a suit at the end swinging the chainsaw around, okay, but his first appearance is him in a butcher's apron, a butcher's uniform. The film is making these visuals of butchery horrific. It's making the details of um, slaughterhouse practice horrific. Now having established meat production as a source of horror, the film then delivers that message in an innovative way. That's what really helps the reading of Texas Chainsaw Massacre as a vegan film. Our protagonist meets a civilian who appears to be helpful but then is revealed to be in on the whole thing. The messaging behind that is that the average Joe is complicit, aka the, the average meat eater is complicit in the thing that is already established as horrific. And this is a method of delivering the message that the film will use again later. And this meeting with a civilian leads directly to meeting the rest of the Sawyer family. Hang on, Sawyer family? That either completely vindicates my take or um, completely refutes it, and I don't know which. Um, so the source of the horror is established at this point, and what the film wants to do then is use this to subvert an image. In this case, it's the image of a family dinner as something wholesome, heartwarming. You have a family gathered round here to partake in a meal, and everything here is making sure that we understand that something's disturbing is going on. Something to note here is that once again they are keeping the source of the horror live. That is, they could have served up pre-sliced protagonist, that, that's absolutely possible, but what they wanted to do is show the methods of slaughter in action. What they're trying to do is make sure that you see the end product and you remember the means of production, and that's often very key to vegan activism. Now I want to pause at this point because I feel it is a compelling case and in researching this uh, disappointingly I found that I am not the first person to notice it. In fact a fair few people have commented on it and it's on the Wikipedia. So much for originality. Um, I guess I always have my, my take that it follows is about the Thought Patrol. So I've got that. Of course, in researching, I wanted to know if the director had an opinion on this. The director, Toby Hooper, is well aware. Um, in fact, whilst filming, he actually gave up meat. I, th I think it was a bit, maybe it was a bit too on the nose. 
Um, however, Tobey Hooper is not exactly on board with this reading. As I mentioned, a fair few people have approached the Texas Chainsaw Massacre as a vegan or vegetarian film, and when they do that, they often tend to quote the director in shorthand and have him saying the film is about meat. Um, but that's a little misleading. Uh, what you need to do, I feel, is look at the whole quotation from the director. For Toby Hooper, the problem isn't so much the methodology, which is unfortunate and necessary. Um, it's more that these methods are being applied to the wrong beings. So sad to say, the director is not down with this interpretation. In short, the director disagrees with seeing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre as a pro-vegan film. However, it is current year, and a direct refutation of this interpretation from the creator himself? That's not going to stop us, hell no! Unfortunately for my originality score, a lot of what I've pointed out has been brought up before. I guess my claim to originality might come from pointing out one pivotal scene that I don't think has been commented on as much. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre consistently brings the horrors of the meat industry and animal agriculture to the fore, but I feel it goes beyond that in one pivotal scene. This comfy living room is littered with bones, and the furniture is constructed from bones. Now this is a striking visual, and it's behind a, what a lot of vegan campaigning tries to do, to reveal the horror that's been hidden, to make it very clear that animals have had to die to make a product. In the context of the film, it's trying to show that the Sawyer family are deranged, but on the level of the messaging, what it's showing is that so many commodities have been made from corpses, that a hell of a lot of animal suffering is involved in something fairly normal, from just your living room to the family dinner. And in doing so, it's trying to denormalize it and it's this scene that had the biggest impact for me on how I view the film as a vegan film. It's the imagery in that that kept coming back to me. It's this scene that had the biggest impact for me in how I view the film and make the case that it's more than a video nasty, it's got a lot going on. But first and foremost, it's a damn good horror film. Grandpa's the best, it won't hurt a bit. I hope I made a good case there. Uh, I felt quite nervous doing it. Uh, I am a vegan, I've been vegan about eight years. Uh, I wouldn't really bring it up in a video, uh, but it seems relevant to do it now. Felt I should probably put my cards on the table there. I definitely don't want to preach at you given the hard time I've given woke reboots. Uh, I feel a little hypocritical there. If it was a persuasive case, leave a like, if only for this amazing mug. Also, uh, this arrived. So, I've got my plans for later covered. I backed this. I live in the UK, so this took a heck of a long time to come, but I am really excited to watch it. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, this is a super tiny channel, so every new subscriber is very welcome, and I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Catch y'all later.